Hey, all my overworked and underappreciated sysadmins, it's Lex from PDQ.com. You know, I'd like to answer some of the most asked questions about PDQ deploy and inventory. Brock has written a really great uh, blog post about this. It's uh, most asked demo questions. I'm gonna go through and kind of answer these and show you what I would do. So if you pull this up, most asked questions, table of contents. Can I manage non-Windows devices with PDQ deploy and inventory? Now, to first of all, to get those non-Windows devices into your inventory, what you're gonna need to do is you need to go to Options, Preferences, and let's go look at Active Directory. Now, it's important that you make sure right here, this Delete Mode is either set to Import Only or Mixed Sync. If it is Full Sync, okay, you'll pull in the non-Windows devices that aren't in your Active Directory, and the next time the sync happens, they'll get deleted. So first, do that. And we'll give that a save. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go to computers, add computers, network discovery. Now, the good and the bad thing about this, it's gonna go out and it's gonna run a range of IP addresses, whatever you set up here, and I, I grabbed the entire subnet, okay? I would highly suggest if you got really aggressive security guys, I applaud that, let them know you're gonna do this because it will systematically ping uh, the machines. So start discovery, you will notice it is now running through and it's pinging all the devices that happen to be in that subnet range, okay? Once it finds them, it will run those IP addresses against uh, DNS to give you names on those and then add, oh, check it out, we've got one device found right now, and then add them to inventory. Oops, seven devices found. Let's do this. I'm gonna shrink that out of the way. Let's go see what's been found so far. Oh, there we go. D19 Jake Webb, interesting. Chloe Kylie, and we got an old DC, Web KMS. So it's found some uh, machines that actually do exist in uh, DNS, and so it's found the names. Otherwise, it put the IP address there. Now, for uh, deploying inventory are based off of the .NET framework, and so if you've got a Mac, Linux machine, anything that's not Windows, we can find it. We'll do a real basic, rudimentary, what are you, okay? But uh, when it returns the information, obviously, if it's not .NET, we can't scan it to give you any more information. But what you can do, and I've got videos out on this, is you can use custom tools to either, you know, let's say it's a printer, and the printer has a web interface, you can add a tool to go and open up the uh, web interface for that. If it's a Linux machine or a Mac, you can have it automatically like, run PuTTY so you can SSH to those machines. So there's some things you can do to manage it, getting it into in, uh, PDQ inventory in this case. The, uh, the next thing, can I build my own custom packages and make them deploy silently? The simple answer to that is, yeah, absolutely. Let me show you how to do that. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is obviously download the install package or EXE or MSI, right? And you're gonna go to new packages. In this case, we're gonna do a, um, it is, let's go see what Brock brought up. And he brought up, it's, uh, I believe it's home PC. There we go. Yep, he's installing uh, my uh, media player for the home PC. So I've got the download, right? So what I'm gonna do is, you know, home, what you call this package, home entertainment. Okay, step one, we are going to do an install step, okay? And then I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna grab from my install files, I happen to drop it on my desktop, there it is, MPC, HPC, okay? Now, now that I have that, I do need to put silent parameters with that because normally when you run an install, you click install, it's gonna ask you questions. Hey, do you wanna install this? Do you wanna put it in this directory? Do you wanna do any custom things to that? So to get that information, you're gonna need to Google, in this case, I Googled silently install MPC, HC. Here we go, Media Player Classic, how to install it. You'll notice right here, the following command is the install exe with a very silent and a no restart. Now, because I've got such amazing typing skills, I'm gonna copy and paste. So at this point, we'll go back to my home entertainment. On the parameters line, I am going to paste very silent and no restart. Um, 
Sometimes they're not case sensitive, sometimes they are. So whatever the vendor says, that's exactly what I do. So there we go. You'll notice what I put on the parameters line, got appended right here. And there we go. We now have our new home entertainment package that is ready for deployment and it will run with silent parameters. Okay, and you deploy that just like you normally would. Select it, deploy once, pick your machines and send it on its way. So takeaways from building your own packages, okay? Need to have silent parameters. Okay, if it's MSI, it's pretty much a slam dunk, but a little Google foo, get the silent parameters, you're off to the races. Let's see, next on our list of things, what is PDQ inventory and why can't I live without it? Well, I'll tell you what, I love deploy. It's amazing, but PDQ inventory is the intelligence that allows you to automate um, everything that you do with deploy. And it also gives you a very, very uh, in-depth view into what's going on in your network. So right out the gate, okay? Here's my network, I've got 54 machines, okay? I'm just gonna run reports, so reports, right? The first report I'm gonna run is a applications report, okay? Now the first time you run it, it's gonna look like this. And we're gonna run it against all computers, not just Jake's machine. It's gonna look like this. Boom. Not overly sexy, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna group by applications because it's an application report. There you go, check it out. I've got 32 and 64 bit versions of 7-Zip. I've got some Canon Pro Series. I've got Corsair Link, Dropbox, Epic Pen. Just scroll through here. This is everything that's on my network. And you'll notice right here, 23 machines. I've got Visual C 2015 redistributable. I can't even say that word, redistributable. And there they are, okay? Now there's that nice thing from here. I can actually double click on the machine and go to it so that I can actually see the application or do work on that machine. So it's a good insight into what's on your network. The other nice thing is you notice right here, I've already got the collection library open that we use or we maintain, so you can use it to update your machine. So right now in my lab, I've got 29 machines that have Chrome. Nine of those have the latest version of Chrome, okay? 22 don't have it installed, which is important to me because I wanna make sure that I am not installing stuff on servers. So make sure my server servers are showing up here, right? And these are Chrome old, you'll notice right here, version 8990 as of this video is the latest version of Chrome, and these guys all need it. So. I can use this to automate my deployments. In fact, I'll show you that in a minute. So those are some things that you can do with inventory. There's tools and other things, but uh, again, uh, Brooks blog goes deeper into that reports, automating reports, you know, running scans. You can go pull information from registries. You can do WMI queries. The, uh, the amount of information you grab is almost endless. It's amazing. So the next thing, how can I manage offline machines? All right, so let's look, here we go. Let us stick with Chrome, okay? In this case, these are the 29 machines that have Chrome, an older version of Chrome on here. And let's say Daffy Duck, right? I'm gonna do the update on Friday. Daffy Duck is my machine. I turn it off before I go home. So it's gonna register as offline right here. How we determine that in inventory is with the heartbeat, okay? If you go to network, so basically I run a ping every 300 seconds to see if a machine is on. This is another reason you need inventory. You can't live without it because you can very elegantly take care of machines that are offline. Now with that, we go back over here. Let's say I'm going to make it, well there, check out my new Chrome schedule, right? It's gonna go on Friday, but if that machine's offline at Friday at eight, how do I take care of it? I add that heartbeat schedule. And I always like to let's say, hey, if that's gonna run on Friday, let's start that on Saturday or the Sunday following, right? So it gets an opportunity to, to do it uh, on the schedule. Basically what that's gonna do is when I come back into the office on Monday, right? Okay, and I turn on Daffy Duck. I was supposed to get Chrome on Friday, right? I turn on the machine Daffy Duck, I'm getting my coffee, okay? Daffy Duck will go from a no offline right here to a yes. When it does that, Inventory is going to check in with deploy and say, hey, was I supposed to get in anything since I was last on? Oh, I was supposed to get Chrome and it will take care of it then, which is a very nice way to take care of machines as they come on and off your network or if a VPN shut down, so on and so forth. So that's how I take care of offline machines and it works absolutely great. Finally, how can I automate 
updating my deployments. Well, again, deploying is super simple, right? I go and deploy, I grab Chrome, deploy, deploy once. I pick my machine, whether I name it or select it from, you know, inventory or whatever. Okay, but that's a one-time shot, right? So that means I've got to do it. So automating it, let's make it so I don't have to be involved and it runs on its own. So I've already built this schedule. Basically what I did was I went in and I said, okay, I want this to run on Fridays, okay? I want to take care of my offline machines by starting a heartbeat after that Friday. Okay, targets. This is where inventory is so key, right? You'll notice I pointed this at the Chrome Old collection. So as the machine gets updated, they come out of Chrome Old or a Chrome version changes, machines go back into Chrome Old. This is gonna take care of that. I don't have to worry about it, okay? There's my package, Chrome. Stop deploying the targets once I, they succeed. I give that an okay. There we go. What's gonna happen Friday? It's gonna check in with inventory. Who's in Chrome Old? These 20 machines, it's gonna update those. They'll go from Chrome Old to Chrome Latest. Angels will sing. Ah, uh, and you no longer have to uh, work. You can just sit with your feet up on your desk because your work's done. Uh, okay, or work on bigger brain projects. But that's how I automate third-party patching. And you can do that exact same thing for your Windows updates. Check it right here. Workstations, I got 34 Windows 10 machines. Let's look at my 2004 64-bit machines. You'll notice I need to update all seven of these guys because they're missing KB00. 1567. Scheduling is exactly the same. The other thing I neglected to mention was these are auto download packages, the ones with the blue arrows, which basically means if a new version comes out, okay, auto downloads. You know, honestly, I set this at 14. I really like it at seven, okay? So it's gonna wait a week and then it will download the new version and replace the one that's on your machine. So I don't even have to remember to, to download new versions, so. Again, this blog is great. Uh, Brock goes into it in, in depth in the read, and hopefully I do it justice by shooting this video. But, but guys, you know, take work off your plate. You know, be lazy like me. Or at least, you know, work smarter, not harder. Appreciate you guys watching. I'm Lex from PDQ.com.